The idea of this is a high-level overview of the Prophecy Dispatch with a focus on the keep trucking integration. So the first thing I am going to do is build a load, just a real simple load. Up in the top left-hand corner, it says book new. This is how a user would create a new load. Really, the detail that you're going to see me put in here, it's really going to be up to the user. There's very minimal that's required, but what I'm doing right now is pulling in the customer. That's we're billing on the load. Just below that is your pickup and delivery information. And you can see as I type a few letters, it does do a search for you. And it populates all the data that's in the database. So I have a load from Bloomfield to Milwaukee. I'm going to put some dates in here. You can either point and click or you can type. There's a calendar if you want to point and click. I'm going to go ahead and type. We'll say pick up at 1230. And we'll say deliver. All right. So I have a customer. I have a pickup. I have a delivery. You could certainly have more than one pick or drop. In the middle section, if you want to track what you're hauling, you can create a list of your items that you haul. You can fill in whatever you want right here as well. This is all optional, as I mentioned. This will be up to the customer to fill in whatever they want. So I'll put some, I'll put some stuff in there. And then down the bottom are my charges. In order to get my charges to appear, I'm going to hit the rate button up top. And this happens to be a, a preset rate for this customer of $1,500 with the $495 fuel surcharge, which happens to be 33%. All right, so that's a, a pretty basic load. I am going to save it to generate a load number right across the top. And I am going to add a little bit more detail. Uh, this is really specific to the integration because this stuff, this stuff does appear, and I want to show it to you as we get over there. Here's a load code, which can be anything you want it to be. And then the instructions field you see here. type in whatever you want. So these things do, like I said, they do appear in the integration, which is why I'm entering them. Also, reference numbers for, for the actual stops or drops, if there was any of that information, you can put it in there. All right, so we've created a load. And before I, before I get to the app, I do want to show you one more screen called our load scheduler. This is one of our dispatch boards. And this is really like a big old whiteboard where you can see everything. I'm going to put it in a three-day window. So what we have here um, on the left are all my pending loads. Right there on top is the one I just created. In the middle are all my drivers. And then the right half of the screen is their schedule based on whatever I've set up for their schedule at this point. So again, not getting into too much detail, just a few highlights. We do warn on certain things. You'll see the L up top for license. So this, this driver has an expired license. That's why it's a red X. I wouldn't be able to use that driver. P is for physical. Down here, we have a physical that's coming due, not overdue yet. So we, you, you do get warnings ahead of time. I is for insurance, if there was any owner operators that had their own insurance. M is for vehicle maintenance. And H is for hours of service, which is why I'm on this screen, because I want to show you our first integration point for the hours of service. If I click on a load over here on the left, we'll go with this Columbus to Hartford load. Under the H column, you're going to see some changes. So what it's doing is it's pulling this information in from the Keep Trucking device. And if I highlight over this green one, which means this driver has the hours to do the load, green is good. It does give me a summary. The yellow one is bad. This driver does not have the hours to do the load. So it's a yellow warning. On the first line there, you can see how it says driver cannot get to the first stop on time. So it tells you why the system does not believe the driver should do the load. Now, this yellow X you see here, the user or the company also has the ability to make these yellow or red. Red would not allow an assignment. Yellow would allow the dispatcher to still make the assignment. Okay. Also, on any one of these drivers, you can right-click. It will save some time from going right into the Keep Trucking web portal where you can see a summary of all their hours. Last updated, their last status, driving time left, on duty left, last complete reset. So all the stuff they might have to go to the Keep, uh, Keep Trucking portal, they won't have to. All right. So. To assign a driver to a load from this screen, and there are a couple ways you can do it in our system, all you really do is click on a load, and you drag it and drop it to the driver you want to put it on. Pretty straightforward. It will fill in the schedule here. You're seeing another hour to service warning. So this is a warning, which I'm OK with. I'm going to assign it anyway, because I have that ability in my system. So we just assigned a driver to a load. Now it's no coincidence that I know this driver has a keep trucking device, so that load is on its way to its device, which I'll show you here in a second. While we're waiting for that to go through, another integration point 
is what we call our mobile message center, or free form messaging up in the top right hand corner. You can send free form messages to your drivers, really something outside the load. So you want to just like a text message really. Send that now so I can show it to you when I go to the app. And it keeps the whole thread as you can see here, and we'll go back to this towards the end. This little message center stays open in the top right hand corner. All right, so just to show you on my assigned screen, this is what's called a plan dispatch at this point. It's on its way to its, to the device, which I'm going to flip over to now. I believe it's come through. I hear it, I hear it beeping. All right. I actually have two things there. So you see dispatches with the red dot and the messages with the red dot. So first we'll go to the dispatch. This is the load. Open that up. The first thing the driver's going to want to do is hit the checkbox to quote unquote accept it. All right, so the two tabs on top, the stops and the dispatch info. First we'll go to dispatch info. This is really a general summary of the load, depending on what the user fills in. So you can see some of the things I did fill in. See Bob at the dock, it's an over the road load. The dates come right from the load itself, the pickup and delivery dates. So again, once again, it depends on what the user decides to put in there. Going back to the stops, uh, first thing I'm going to do is click on Prophecy Transportation just to see information about the stop. And you can see it has freight all kinds, 40,000 pieces. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Directions, reference numbers, again, whatever the users want to see on here, what they would have filled in. And then I'm going to go to the arrived shipper. Now, as you all know, uh, there is geofencing support, so the user won't have to do this if they want to use the geofencing. I'm going to go ahead and manually put a time in here. Shipment updates, if there's anything on this screen they want to fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a, a bill of lading number. For now, that'll be it. The goods updates, if they want to put in the actual quantity, maybe it was different than what they were told they were going to get. So I'll go ahead and just modify some of these items. And then the depart shipper, which is just like the arrival one. Again, it just can be geofenced. In the demo environment, that's hard to do. I'm going to pop it by a minute. I want that to be PM. All right. So we picked up, basically. So now that information is on its way back to the dispatch system. But in the meantime, while it's doing that, let me show you the, the message that came over, the free form message or the text, if you will. Again, it keeps a thread on the device. So there's the message in the bottom I sent. Please call home. OK, thank you. And ultimately, we'll see where that goes. All right, so now I am going to flip back to the dispatcher role. And you might see me force some connections for demonstration purposes. In the real world, you don't do this. but Rather than wait around, we can force it to make it happen quicker. That's what I'm doing right now. And again, I can't reiterate enough, the user does not do that in the real world. You can see it is still assigned, but once this updates, it's going to change. All right, one more, one more force connection. All right, so if I refresh this board, you'll see that load disappear. But more importantly, there it is in route. So 13896 is the load we're working with. It's in route. It's an active dispatch once that driver accepted it. Some of the information that I sent back, if I go into the load, if you remember, I put a bill of lading number in there, and I modified these pieces to 41.5 and 31 pallets for, for an example. Again, they can modify whatever you allow them to. All right, so let's go back. But one more thing I want to mention on this screen here, another integration point that we do, we will pull in GPS readings on a timer. And it's going to update these fields right here, last check-in, last city, last state. It's going to continually do that. It's automatic. What we will do from there is calculate an ETA. And if the user wants, they can set up alerts that will compare the ETA to the scheduled delivery time. So it's a rolling ETA. And any time that ETA goes over the scheduled delivery time, the alert would go off and uh, notify the customer that it's potentially going to be late. So again, we pull in GPS, convert them into check calls. Uh, there is one more thing, speaking of check calls, that I want to show you the times that I put in. 
So the actual arrival and departure fields here, you can see the first one I accidentally put AM, but there's 12.31 PM is when he departed. All right, let's go back over to the driver role. Once again, the loads come into dispatches. I'm going to go to the final stop or the drop. Same, it's all the same. So if the driver needs to see any information in the location, it's right there. You can also, so this view on map, you can, you can navigate from here as well. It'll use the default mapping system on the device for any of the locations. The arrive, once again, can be geofenced. I should mention also on the screen, you can see drop and pick up for trailers. If the driver is dropping or picking up a trailer, they can type in the trailer number. It'll, it'll associate that within the dispatch system. Shipment update. So one, one uh, thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and scan in some load documents. In this case, I'll just choose bill of lading. I'm going to add a photo. I'm going to move my keyboard a little bit. So there is a document. Put it in focus best you can. All right, looks good to me. So I'm going to say OK. And that's all I'm going to update there. I'm going to hit Submit. And then, once again, the Depart. No, oh, I'm sorry, the goods. I'm not going to update anything here. And then the Depart, which, again, will be geofenced. I'm just going to update a minute. And it's telling me it's done. I'm the driver. I'm done. You can see it went away. But before I leave the app, I want to show you that it does actually save the history. And the driver can go in and see the information after the fact. So it's all right there. All right. Flip back to the dispatcher role. And again, I'm going to force a connection. It might take a second. In the meantime, while it is connecting, you can see up in the top right-hand corner, I believe, a red flashing message. This is the message that the driver sent back to me. So it does give you a flashing alert like that. And I have one. You could have more than one, of course. I'm going to open that up. And you'll see the message. OK, thank you. And you can open it up. And once again, it does keep the entire thread if you want to look at the whole thread. There it is. So I sent out, please call home. And he sent back, OK, thank you. All right. Looks like it's updated. So now if I go to my completed screen, just some of the highlights here, the actual delivery date, 1235. That was my timeout. And the other key component here is the imaging. I type in the load number here in my imaging window, which I think was 13896. There's a document I literally just scanned in. It's a bill of lading, that's what I called it. You can call them whatever you want. It came in from Keep Trucking, and the time and date it came in. So the benefit of this document coming in right away is when it gets to the billing process, the billing person will go in there. There's a flag that indicates the paperwork is either in or it's not in. And they'll know whether they can bill it right away. And in this case, with this feature, which we really like, they will be able to bill it moments from when the driver delivered and sent the paperwork back. Uh, the last integration point is, and I think Kevin alluded to this, is we do pull in miles for IFTA into our fuel tax module. And the miles from the keep trucking device will be pulled in for IFTA purposes.